sort of worked on uh, various uh, local newspapers for a number of years uh, before I ended up at the uh, Press Gazette about five years ago. Press Gazette is a trade newspaper for journalists. For the, I have seen it on the newsstands, but being a, a, a media broadcaster, it's not the sort of first thing I pick up, I have to say, on a Friday. What sort of things does it cover? Well, we're basically um, aimed at all journalists, really, and there's probably about, I don't know, 50,000 of them in the UK. So um, anything that interests them, really, with the sort of the trade magazine for journalists, anyone who's interested in journalism. And uh, we used to be weekly, and uh, then a couple of months ago we've uh, gone monthly, and uh, we do a lot of stuff online on pressgazette.co.uk. I was going to say the online bit is probably the place that most certainly the young journalists we're training here at the university will actually go to. Uh, do you have to pay for the online bit? No, it's all completely free. Uh, Given up trying to charge anyone for anything on the internet, it's just impossible. <laughs> now, it, it, in, in a lot of trade journals, I mean, if it was computer trade journals, it would be showing us the latest gizmo. Um, if it was a car journal, it was the latest supercar. What's the latest new best thing for a print journalist? Um, I think the, the latest best thing is to hang on to your job at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, that's what we try and uh, tell them. We try and... Uh, help people navigate their way through the choppy waters ahead. Now, the choppy waters, I can remember, years and years back, when there was a little bit of trouble when um, one or two um, regional newspapers, uh, at least the owners, took a very tough line, and I remember being in Nottingham when there was a little problem over the Nottingham Evening Post. Um, it, it's not like that now. I mean, it, it, it's, it's much more cutthroat, isn't it? And, and papers fall by the wayside because I think, you know, I think spoken about internet delivery of newspapers, that seems to be the way it's going. And if you can't charge for it, how can you justify a newspaper? Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's not really um, a great deal of industrial problems because I think a lot of journalists really understand that they have to change very quickly uh, if they're going to kind of survive. Um, the sort of problems... Um, affecting the journalism industry are kind of uh, a double whammy in that um, there's a structural change going on in society in the way people uh, consume media. And, and don't read newspapers in the way they used to. They don't buy, buy newspapers anymore. <laughs> they, 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 they read lots of newspapers, but they don't want to pay for it. Um, they re- there's lots and lots of free newspapers, and Metro's tremendously um, successful, as in London, the streets of London at the moment are awash with newsprint. And we get them here. I mean, yeah. the, the train that comes across from uh, Nottingham quite often mm. will have copies of that morning's Metro on board. Yeah, so there's a, a real change going on there in the fact that people don't really want to buy newspapers in as, in as big a number as they used to. And then there's a sort of cyclical downturn which we're going into, which is hitting us at the same time in the sense that, um, like everyone else in the economy, the, the media feels it first because people stop buying and selling things and don't need to advertise them. So... Um, Profit margins in mm. media companies are typically down sort of 20% year on year at the moment. And which is why they often diversify. And quite a few newspapers now have what they call VJs, video journalists, who will produce material not just for print but for online. And within that online content, they'll be doing the television thing. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the sort of interesting thing about being the editor of a magazine about, press, about journalism at the moment because it's, um, it's changing very, very quickly. And um, uh, daily newspaper journalists will also... Um, record broadcast bulletins and podcasts and uh, video reports and also write blogs which are sort of a bit different from um, your kind of uh, traditional uh, print news stories so it's, it's all very different Opinion has crept in opinionated journalists as against journalists who still work with that dispassionate third party well researched independence that I don't think is around as much now as it used to be I think there is more opinion but I think you'd probably... Um, it probably what the BBC would call sort of judgment or insight. So you, um, y- your news story is still very much um, uh, th- this is the news and we don't comment on it. But if you were to write a blog post, then you also give the reader the benefit of your specialist insight. And I don't think journalists um, get into too much of the knockabout comment stuff, but they can certainly sort of give a judgment on what things mean. At what point does blogging stop being sort of semi-journalistic and becoming gossipy? Because that's the way I tend to read a lot of blogs, is it's it's the bits they can't put in, so it's the bits that it's the tittle-tattle. I guess there's an element of that, but I guess there's always been an element of that in journalism anyway, with sort of diary pages, and even a diary page now, and it's a kind of the stories that don't quite get stood up in the main bit of the paper. So, I mean, it's not a particularly edifying part of journalism, and I don't think, you know, people should do it, really. <laughs> and you're talking from the senior service of, <laughs> of journalism, the print side. It's, 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 it's really not grown-up stuff, is it, really? No, and I think, um, 
I think there's you know the, the same rules apply really that you don't um, that you the you know um, comment is free but you know facts are sacred and you and you you know you don't you don't um, comment unless it's on provable facts that you can prove and obviously that and that's sort of the best way to stay legally covered as well not get sued.